Hey there friends and enemies, Joker here again and today I'm going to go over everything we know about the Awakened King DLC dropping for Remnant 2 later this month. I'm very excited about this, I've been waiting for the DLC for quite some time. We got a teaser trailer that I'm going to check out first and then dive deep into what else the developers have told us so far about what's coming with the DLC. So let's check out the trailer and uh, yeah, I'm very excited about this. I've been waiting to come back to Remnant 2 for sure. It's a vibe. I once served, once counted as a friend, is no more. What remains is a true tyrant. Oh, that's sick. I like that's based off the statue. Slip ever deeper into peril. New location, new enemy. Should we fail to put a stop to his bloodlust? Will you like the way? That scythe looks awesome. Nimoy. She looks like she's going to be the main NPC in charge of the DLC. And it's dropping on the 14th, which is crazy. It's just dropping in a couple weeks. So this might be our first look at a new weapon right here. Looks awesome. I'm a big, big, big fan. So as far as what we know is coming with the DLC, in that patch, we are going to get a trait cap trait point cap increase that is going to be for everybody whether you own the dlc or not if you've pre-purchased the ultimate edition you'll have access to the dlc included with that but if not it's going to be ten dollar standalone charge for this dlc the dlc will include a new location in Lawson that is going to be more of a beach area with also a big castle to kind of infiltrate but just like the base game you'll be able to Reroll that you're going to be able to enter it through the campaign, but also through adventure mode as well. And all of that is very, very interesting. Everything you would kind of expect from Remnant 2 carries over into the DLC. There's going to be new monsters to check out. There's also going to be new weapons. So if you didn't play the Abomination Domination event, there are five new corrupted weapons that are already in the game, as well as a bunch of new mutators. And then with the DLC, we're getting even more weapons. So if you are a lapse player, you haven't played in a while you'll have all the dlc weapons to chase if you have the dlc but even if you're just coming back for the base game and the trait point cap increase you're going to be able to chase some of the corrupted weapons as well so that's very nice i like all of that and i'm excited they also announced that some of the weapons and stuff to collect within the game with from the dlc is going to be available in the base game and spread out throughout other locations as well which i think is a way to kind of rejuvenate some areas that people have been to a lot of times, maybe find some new secrets and uh, change around some things just a little bit. And it sounds like the DLC is going to be a pretty substantial amount of content as far as Remnant 2 players go. I know if you're just looking at the base game uh, as far as start to finish of the campaign, it might not seem that long, but when you look for all the secrets, explore all the side dungeons, do all the things, that's what... Remnant 2 players are looking for, and that's what the DLC delivers as well, which is very, very exciting. They also talked about a couple other things that I found to be fascinating. We have a Ritualist archetype that is coming with the DLC. This one is going to be focused on status effects. This is what I was actually hoping for when I made a previous video talking about the DLC. I really wanted it to be a status effect based archetype class and that's what we're getting it sounds like it could be very very cool you could maybe even lean into something like burn builds and poison builds with the ritualist so i'm really excited to see how that all plays out and really looking forward to making different builds with it as far as the weapons go another thing i'm looking forward to is the fact that uh, the developers have said that they don't want to make weapons that are okay they want Weapons that some people are going to love, some people are going to hate, but you have strong feelings about because they want every weapon to be somebody's favorite weapon. They don't want any mid-weapons that nobody uses because they're just not worth the time, energy, or effort to obtain. So that'll be fascinating to see how they 
mix up the weapons from what we already have in the game right now, how powerful they are, because I'd imagine these new weapons are going to be pretty strong, maybe in conjunction with the new archetype, or maybe even have abilities that pair well with existing archetypes that are underperforming to make them even better than they were and, and bring them up to par with other options that we currently have. So I'm really curious to see how this is all going to shake out. We're going to have the same difficulty levels. It doesn't look like we're getting an additional difficulty level at this point above Apocalypse, but I'll be fascinated to see if that changes in the future. And remember, this is just the first DLC of three planned ones we know we're getting. And who knows, if the game is very successful, maybe we'll get additional pieces of content after those as well. And maybe we get some events in between DLC like we did the Abomination Domination event. Overall, very excited. Can't wait to get hands-on with this. I'm looking forward to checking it out. I'll definitely be here with any news that drops about the new DLC, and also we'll be live checking it out as soon as it is available as well. My name is Jopa. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. It helps me out tremendously. It shows you want to see more Remnant 2 content from me going forward. I hope you have a good one, and I'll catch you all later.